I spoke to the creative director from Mullen Low just a couple of weeks ago, and he said very often the way it happens is they'll go to an edit and they'll hope the editor can think of something to drag from YouTube and pull under. <laughs> By the way, this is one of the most extraordinary things. Because I think if you ask consumers to write an ad, I'm not saying consumers would be perfect. I think a lot of ordinary punters would produce an ad by doing music first. They'd think of a song that was really good and then they'd build an ad around it. The reason that never happens in the ad industry, although as people like Neil French, by the way, proposed, you know, uh, Neil French did this one. Did I tell you about this last time? He did this fantastic experiment where you had to send him your 10 most memorable moments from all of Phil. And he got you to do this to make the point that something like 70% of them had really noticeable distinctive music. You know, one of mine was, you know, the singing of Men of Harlech in Zulu, for example. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, or, you know, there are films where, by the way, the only memorable bit, uh, you know, if if I asked you to remember your, you know, your 10 most memorable bits of, um, uh, uh, let's say Pulp Fiction, okay. Well, okay, in fairness, you might remember the thing when they're trapped in the basement of that kind of redneck store. But I've already um, got the surf guitar in my head. But you've already got the surf guitar in your head, exactly, mm. yeah. And the weird thing is, of course, the way you are, the way in which ads are written and approved, you're kind of not, doesn't provide an opportunity for you doing it that way around. I'm not suggesting it should always be done that way around, obviously. Without the use of the music, um, I don't think Curb Your Enthusiasm, say, would be a, a third as popular as it is. And he more or less was determined from the off to get that particular theme song um, and also, you know, the, the extraordinarily clever use he makes of... There's quite a bit of Gilbert and Sullivan in it, isn't there? Yeah. Strange. Yes, it's... So uh... he'll play Three Little Girls from School or something will be put in. But he, he there's something there which is... You know, there's a whole thesis to be written on the genius use of music in um, Curb. Because it kind of keeps the whole thing rolling in a way that without it wouldn't quite work. A lot of what's done in uh, advertising is, of course, sync, as opposed to, you know, we're, we're composers. We are also supervisors, but generally we compose music for picture. And uh, it's very popular because uh, it, to synchronise pre-existing music, I think part of it is because the music's already there. You don't need to brief someone, which is kind of cumbersome in a lot of people's uh, yeah. minds, particularly yeah. particularly producers. <laughs> but uh, um, but so, so because that's already there, it's very uh, attractive. And also, you know, a couple of directors, well-known directors, made it very appealing to synchronise pre-existing music and give it a new flavour by putting it on the film. Scorsese does it a lot. Tarantino, as you said, did it a lot. Um, but it's made... Well, I don't know what the... I'm, you know, I'm too young to kind of know what the price of syncing music to picture was in the 90s, say. But it's uh, it, can be, it can be really absurd now. So we were asked by um, someone at the Anne Partnership, can you get us a cost for Paul Simon, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover? Um, right. And are you familiar with the difference between pub, uh, copyright and recording? license yes yeah yeah so obviously copyrights the abstract just the song itself publishing and they said for publishing only with no lyric changes we want half a million dollars as a base rate for negotiation what yeah yeah, yeah. so that's you know and, and that's that eclipses <coughs> the production budget of most adverts i'm, I'm aware mm. of so and probably the 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 creative budget in general by comparison to the media budget no i know someone who's made a film called king kennedy which is all around the um uh, JFK, Martin Luther King, Robert Kennedy, um, period. Uh, and it's a fantastic film, brilliantly put together. Um, the problem is that without music, it's, you know, it doesn't quite work because you need the music of the period. And essentially, you run up against just absolutely impossible demands. 